When playing fighting games, a lot can be defined in character matchups. As defined in the fighting game glossary, a matchup is the strategy and game knowledge that applies for one specific character against another specific character, and are often measured by stating how many games out of 10 a character should win if two high-level players of equal skill played against each other, ranging from the even 5-5 matchup to a more difficult 7-3. But what about the more uneven matchups? You know. The ones so cursed they're forbidden to be spoken of in public. The matchups that hide under your bed. The ones with broken hitboxes, oppressive zoning, and infinite pain. The 8-2s and 9-1s that keep you up for days. Worse, what of the unfathomable horror and terror that is the dreaded 10-0? These are some of the worst matchups in fighting games. Vanilla Street Fighter 4. Zangief versus Seth. Seth Killian is a fantastic human being. The character named after him, though? He's an asshole. As the final boss of Street Fighter 4, Seth brought cannons to a knife fight. Just look at what Seth had in Vanilla Street Fighter 4. Projectiles, teleports, a wall jump, a reversal uppercut, a goddamn sniper rifle, and just really good mobility. This character was built to destroy grapplers like Zangief. With amazing space control and keepaway options, Zangief just doesn't get many opportunities to start his offense. And even when he can get inside, Seth has so many ways to escape with his teleports, DPFADC, or even a reversal SPD of his own. What's a Russian bear fighter supposed to do? Injustice 1, Zod versus Lex. I mean, just look at it. Put your hands in the air and give him your energy. Oh, that's it. That that's was it. Ballsy. Guys, the game's over. That was so ballsy. The game is over. Oh. It's over. On a scale of the balls. Well. Oh, man. It's, and it begins. It's over. Zoners eat Lex for breakfast, and the Zod matchup is no exception. His Kryptonian rifle is perfect for keeping Lex away, and its meter burn versions cover most of the angles Lex needs to use on approach. It certainly doesn't help that Zod can also summon a ray from the Phantom Zone to keep Lex pinned down, or use his eye beams to push Lex near full screen even on block if he somehow manages to get too close. I can't let you get close. It's a difficult matchup, and Lex has to play with extreme patience to even have a shot at winning, but you know it's going to be a struggle when even the commentators throw the towel three seconds into a match. It's over. No. NRS, please. Oh, God. Okay, sure, the matchups we've talked about so far aren't exactly unwinnable. Difficult, but maybe with enough knowledge and a little bit of bracket luck, you might be able to squeeze by with a win. But these next few that we're gonna talk about, these next few are good. Jackie Chan's Fist of Fire, Thorsten versus Kim Marie. Thorsten is regarded as one of the more powerful characters in Jackie Chan's Fist of Fire, with many pointing to things such as his fast backdash, amazing pokes, and great damage output as some of his key strengths. One of the more powerful tools in his arsenal, however, are his full-screen, almost fully invincible teleports. They're incredibly fast and give Thorsten access to a nightmarish keep-away game, especially against a character like Kim Marie, who relies on staying close to her opponent to be effective. All Thorsten needs to do in this matchup is to get and maintain a life lead, and then teleport his way to a timeout victory. We'd cry too, Kim. We'd cry too. X-Men Next Dimension, Sabretooth vs. Gambit. This one was submitted by commentator Ketchup, and it's a doozy. As a grappler in X-Men Next Dimension, Sabretooth has access to a few chain throws, one of which being his air throw. However, there's a wild glitch where Sabretooth can input the command for his air chain throw anywhere on the screen, and it will actually teleport their opponent into the grab animation. And since this attack knocks down your opponent for so long, he can just chain this forever, giving him a full screen infinite. What makes this so bad for Gambit in particular is that for some reason, he's the only character in the game that loses the ability to do anything before rounds two and three, giving Sabretooth enough time to launch Gambit into his chain grab infinite. Welcome to 10-0 hell. Ah, the taste of blood. King of Fighters 95, Yori versus Chin. This last one is a bit situational, but after seeing it and testing it for myself, I still can't believe it made it into the final release. In KOF 95's Italy stage, the first member of each team starts the match by jumping off a small bridge. Now with most of the cast, this isn't an issue, but then here comes Chin. Chin is notably shorter than most characters in the game, and as the first character in any fight on the Italy stage, he lands later than the rest of the cast. And some of you can see where I'm going with this. So unfortunately for him, this can happen. 
Go! Bruh. For some reason, the game doesn't actually wait for both characters to hit the ground before starting the round. And since this intro leaves him airborne, he can't block. He can't do anything. So someone like Yori, who has a far-reaching Rekka that can lead into infinites, can end his day before it even gets started. Yori, Bata, Jin, ready, go! <laughs> No wonder Chin drinks so much. Agree? Disagree? Have suggestions for more terrible matchups for us to look at? Let us know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can do so at patreon.com slash holdbacktoblock. Until next time.